One of the most important things to talk about as you introduce the idea of science is that the confusion that exists sometimes in society about what's scientific and what's not. One of the biggest problems that exists in science is that scientific knowledge is usually misinterpreted or miscommunicated. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about the scientific method at the last step, which is, talks, which is sharing what you've learned with others. A lot of times people pick up these tidbits from science articles and research that's been done and they blow it out of proportion. And you see the news making a big deal. That's something that the scientist himself never said. You know, it's never a conclusion that the scientist made. But, you know, they got one sentence from the article and they made a whole a huge deal about it. You know, you know uh, oh, the life was created, you know, synthetic cyborg made. And all the scientists did is made a little piece of silicon with uh, cardiac cells, you know, kind of flap around. That's not really alive yet. And see, you know, misrepresentation of what actually happens is very common. But it goes even worse when people think that things which are not science at all are science. Because even though a lot of times people discredit science because of things that have happened, things like fabrication of data, things like, you know, um, the fact that a lot of times you find out that what was true, new evidence shows that it's not. So some people get confused about that and they think, you know, you can't trust science. I disagree, and we'll talk about that in the, in the last part of this lecture series where we talk about the value of science. In fact, science is trustworthy because it wants to accept change, you know. And in fact, it takes a lot to change it. You know, it's very hard to change it. It's very robust. It's very strong because we, I, I, like we talked about before in the very first videos, a lot of people talk to get it to create what we know as scientific knowledge. So it takes a lot to challenge that. But the fact that it's open to open to be challenged. It's what makes it trustworthy because if something never changes, you start thinking about, you know, okay, we found the ultimate truth. Everything else doesn't matter. Science is not like that. It sounds a little more fishy. It sounds a little more religion. And we'll talk, we'll explore this idea of how can you trust something that's changing constantly uh, as well in the future parts of this lecture series. But what I wanted to focus on this video is the idea that science and pseudoscience, things that kind of sound like science, can sometimes be be misused because even though science some people don't trust it because it's always changing and some people uh, don't trust it because some scientists are unethical sometimes you know there is a lot of faith in society and science still and so when some people make things sound scientific they may get credit just because of that and that's where pseudoscience is dangerous because something that sounds scientific can be trusted just because it sounds like it's science. How do something, people make something sound like it's science? Well, they would seem to have data. They would seem to have a lot of logical facts, a lot of uh, information thrown at you. They would talk very assertively as if this is the truth. And they would seem very intellectual, very complex when they're telling you things. And so it may seem like it's science, but it's not. So let's talk about all that. Uh, first of all, science is different from other kinds of thought, okay? We talked about this. It's not just a body of knowledge. It's also a process that we use to understand things. And part of this process is the, accepting the idea of change and constantly, constantly being skeptic and challenging everything. There's other fields of study, though, which are also intellectual. Think about philosophy, for example, which is thinking about thinking. It's also about logic, about ethics, about using thought and thinking about thinking, critical thinking and all these things. But it's not exactly science. Although in history, many famous philosophers are considered the fathers of science, they're technically separate things. History can be very intellectual. Math can be very intellectual. And in ways, even related to science. But they're not science. All right? You have to separate what is and what's not. There are a lot of other intellectual things. For example, religion, um, metaphysics. All of these things which are very, very high. It takes a lot of intelligence to be able to truly grasp and understand the basics of those things. And yet, they're not science. So how do you define science from something that it's not, or it kind of sounds like science? How do you define the process to find the truth that science is from other things which state the truth or argue the truth but do not defend the truth? And that's the difference between science and any of these other things. Let's look at history, for example. What's true in history? What the victors wrote. In most cases, what the versions of history is what was written by those who survived it. And that's interesting because if you think about it, that means that history is biased. 
what we know of history is only what survived it. Um, likewise, philosophy, which is thinking about thinking, there's a lot of versions of that, a lot of schools of thought. Truth is questionable by philosophy itself. There's a whole school of thought in philosophy that says there is no truth. Don't even get me started on religion, where there are so many different versions of it around the world. So which one is the truth? But any one of these people will tell you that this is the truth. For example, in math, they'll say, here are the numbers. Here's 1 plus 1 equals 2. There's no denying that. So science is a little different from these other types of thought. Because science is like this. Science is backed up by evidence. It doesn't just state things. It shows you the evidence to prove those things. So a true scientist will not just make statements. They will show you how they got to that point. They will show you the data that they collected, the observations, the patterns, everything they've done to actually prove it. You know. Also, unlike the other ones, a true scientist will never say, this is proven to be right. On the contrary, I know it's kind of complicated, but scientists will usually say, oh, this is just not wrong for now. A true scientist accepts the idea that you can never say definitively that this is the truth. Because history has shown us in science that new evidence, better tools, better research, better technology makes us understand a phenomena that we previously thought we understood better than before. And then we end up having to change our understanding and our explanations and our predictions and our ways of controlling the natural world. And so instead of saying this is right, in science we say you just, you're not wrong. Uh, there's nothing right now that can tell me that you're wrong. All the evidence supports what you're currently saying, or better, fails to reject what you're currently saying. That's what a true scientist says. So, for example, we don't say that um, things fall. We say there's not enough evidence to deny that it doesn't. <laughs> or better, there's no evidence to disprove the fact that it does. That's how science works. Science doesn't prove anything. Science just tries to disprove things. And when it fails to, accepts that in the meantime. And that's what makes science a working knowledge. Something that's constantly changing. Because as new evidence comes, that knowledge can be re-examined and changed in the light of that. Because science does never wants to find the truth. And what it wants is to find the best option or best understanding of the world that's around us. Scientists accepts criticism. It even invites criticism. And it contests the evidence. And when somebody tries to criticize what scientists are saying, instead of criticizing the person, it will criticize what the person is saying. So that's very, very important. Like when two scientists are arguing, they don't argue about their, each other's character. They argue about each other's points, each other's evidence. And that's also very important. And also, they present the information in a clear way. There's no shadiness. There's no like, oh, this is a mystery, a secret. I can't tell you. I know what their answer is, but I won't tell you. On the contrary, scientists will be the ones to jump at opportunities to clarify and explain things. A true scientist loves to teach. Look at pseudoscience. It's going to be exactly the opposite. So let's talk about some of the examples of that, all right? Uh, for example, uh, internet scams. They come to you and say, hey, you can make a lot of money by doing this, this, and this, and here's what other people have done. Uh, look, this, this exercise works great. It will, and then they, they'll tell you three people who, uh, who got a lot better with it. They'll show their pictures before and after, Photoshop and all, and they'll do all that stuff. And then they'll say, oh, look, you take this little medicine here, and it will make you stronger, and it will make you healthier, and all that stuff. Where is the evidence? Okay, you know, where are the people talking about how it didn't work for them? Where is the effort to disprove it? Where is the effort to re-examine, to debate it? When you see those things, there's never the bad side. There's only the good side. And if you try to attack them, they'll say, oh, you just don't believe it. Oh, it sucks for you. You're a bad person. Instead of attacking your point, they will attack you. Likewise, think of astrology. Perfect example, full of math high level of thinking, complex uh, explanations. It all seems to fit in a mathematical way to make logistic sense. You look at it and the person who's intelligent is like, wow, this is phenomenal. It's so interesting. But does it ever change? No, it's been the same way for 5,000 years. It's the same way that we used to be when the people came up with it 5,000 years ago. 
you know, uh, the computers have only made it, the math easier, but the principles are exactly the same. You try to prove it wrong, they'll say, oh, um, well, you know, you just, you're, you're missing the point. Oh, that horoscope didn't work for you, but um, yeah, it works for most people. Never mind where those most people are, and if you actually do a study, we'll see that it's never the case. And in fact, if you look throughout history, newspaper articles recycle horoscopes from years past for the same date sometimes. And yes, you're trusting that as something that is true. There's no evidence behind it. There's no effort to disprove it like there is in science. It doesn't change over time. It doesn't respond to criticism well. It doesn't accept it. And on the contrary, it attacks the critic instead of attacking the evidence. And it is shady. It's mysterious. You can't really understand it unless you're a master of it. I can't really tell you how I did this. It's just how it is. Even in science, sometimes there's some types that are fishy and not really scientific. One example is phrenology. People used to think that bumps in your head were tied into your personality. So if you had a bump in a certain area of your head, you would be more like this or more like that. And that, there was no evidence for this. There was no effort to try to disprove it. In fact, every time somebody would say, like, hey, I have that bump, but I'm not very emotional. And the person would say, oh, well, actually, in your case, because you have that bump with that bump, then that cancels that out. It's like, but he's like, well, but you never told us that before. It's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you that. And then somebody else shows up that has those two bumps and they are emotional and the person's like, oh, oh yeah, but that's because you have the third bump. You see, that's the problem with pseudoscience. No matter how much you try to disprove it, the person will just reorganize the data to, to, to fit their explanation. And so there can never be disproven. Exactly the opposite of science when you actually try to disprove it. You try to prove it wrong as much as you can. You continually criticize, you continually look for change. And it's that fact that you can't find a way that makes the knowledge robust at that time, at present. And you never hide, you never shady, you never attack the person, you only attack the evidence. That's true science. So most often than not, science will focus on questions about how it works, when it happens, what it happens, while things like why questions are reserved for things like philosophy. Or religion. So I think that ultimately the best way to differentiate science from other forms of thought is the skepticism of science. It's the idea that science is always asking questions. Another one of my favorite quotes by Einstein is that he says that the important thing is to always ask questions. And that's what scientists do. They are skeptic. They're critical. They're, they want to see the evidence. They, they want to, to prove things until new evidence shows that perhaps they weren't true. So they, they have the whole thing of saying things are not right. They are willing to accept that things will change over time as new evidence comes in and examines that. And because of that, they invite and accept criticism and look at the data, not at the person. And, and also present information in a way that's fair so that everybody can understand uh, that data and there's no hidden aspect of this. So, you know, be a scientist, ask questions, and there will lead to greater understanding.